Red leaf. Red leaf. Zach. Uh oh. Zach. Can you hear me, Zach? Um, I would like to answer. Oh, okay. There you are, Zach. Hey, I'm Zach. <laughs> Sleeping again? I wish. Well, rise and shine. It's time for us to head back out into the chaos. Is it now? I just want to sleep. Isn't that right, Zach? Yeah, sure, whatever you say. Black strain. That too is an L. Uh, plus, that's a pretty interesting uh, intro title. The town doesn't exist. I hate to tell you that. Zack, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. Francis York Morgan. Look at that, Zack. She's welcoming us with open arms. She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. What an honor. Hurry up and chow down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon since the moment I got here. And the name of this wonderful town, Lacare. Sounds like French to me, but what does it mean? I'm the chef, David. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related. Fair enough. Chef. Did you hear that, Zach? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zack. Zack? Uh, please don't ask me about Zack. It's a private matter. If you <laughs> say so, still. Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What you reckon, mister? Zach, he's definitely a professional, but it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice if you ask me. Actually, Chef David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. But shoot, I ain't the one you ought to be asking, Mr. FBI. I only heard what I heard. But seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. Oh, freak. Uh... This one. You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, sure. 
I reckon the whole town did. Meaning? She's Lise Clarkson, the little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. Okay, we're gonna go back to the first part of this. They found her body. How does she know she's murdered? That's a plot hole, I think. Unless they exp have to explain something else that I don't get. How do you find a body that should have already been found to start the whole investigation of a murder that happened that you should have had a body for, but you don't have because it's just been discovered? The only thing I can think of is they hide it after they found it. It's the only thing I can think of for the investigation, but it doesn't make sense. The Clarkson family? That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seat. They own most of the land around here. From the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. Everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know. That wouldn't fly in those places. They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. Oh, great, there's more. What do you know about the Clarkson's house? Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say, but I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best steer clear of that place. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. They folks with real power. What do you mean by real power? Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. <laughs> okay. In the last couple of years, that could be that could be taken so many different ways. And because we're in Louisiana, I'm curious if it really means the remnants of the South South? Especially the head of the family, P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. She got unalived, sir. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe for nothing. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. You in the jungle, baby. You're gonna die. I see. Well, keep that in mind. Is the local law enforcement investigating the case? <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> Shoot, mister, what you think? Now, I told you this ain't no city. We in the bonafide boondocks here. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss jaw. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. That's the deep south for you. But does it work? This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. A weird way. Like something on a TV show. How so? The sheriff's department ain't never seen nothing like this. Live and Let Die, Angel Heart, and the Pelican Brief. What are Paul McCartney and the Wings songs? Right. Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in oh. New Orleans. <laughs> Not where I was going with. They're all excellent movies, but to me they lack realism. What do the movies have to matter? Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat people. That's my point. Cat people. Khajiit has Where's for Coin? 1982. Directed by Paul Schrader. The crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the ultimate muse of the 80s. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Does this movie actually exist? <laughs> what? Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. I have no comment. I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. How is that reality? Understand? I'm talking about hyper-realism. After watching it, I felt like I just had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. Uh, okay. Another vital element of cat people is the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. 
<laughs> Talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call A Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder. Period. What? You need to remember this, because it's the truth. Mm, whatever you say, mister. Oh my god, it actually exists. So, uh, what's your point again? Never mind, don't worry about it. But... I already covered all the important parts. I don't... I don't understand. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister. Why do you look so excited, huh? Like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. Oh. Well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes. But folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. So they found the body of the girl who was murdered. Then we just found the body of the girl that was murdered. What? And under that bridge, there was some kind of altar. An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Do you think you are? Nah. Wasn't nothing like that. Just a weird altar. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. Scattered around the altar like. So she was sacrificed? That's what the fella who discovered us said, yeah. Bingo, Zack. This case has got our names all over it. By the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you walked. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? What? But you with the FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork. How is this food still hot in like 15 minutes? When you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night, when you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket. Your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. What? In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. But no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. Another mode? Want to hear the details? Not really. But I'll listen if you want me to. I feel that. Then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then, I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana, so I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. An 05 hybrid. I'll be honest with you, when I was 15, I didn't think hybrids existed in 05. So I don't, I don't know about that one. A hybrid car. Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. Well, he's right. Who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I don't think this happens yet, though. Electric sports cars, anyway. I can see it now. It's the world of the last Starfighter. Oh, God. 1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but I couldn't care less about that. I couldn't care less. So you do care. You should be saying, I could care sorry. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself. 
especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No other sci-fi movie has ever had. So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? Good job, David. Sorry, I got off topic. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. I remembered exactly where I parked it, right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. In short, someone stole it, and in its place, they left me this. What? A skateboard. A skateboard. A skateboard? Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Remarkable, don't you think? No. So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so surprised? How, how far did you skateboard? No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But by the time I hit the three-mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. By the ten-mile mark, I'd even learned to do a few tricks. It was a journey of self-discovery. Not even I knew I had this latent talent sleeping inside me. This summer's gonna be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. Watch out, you don't go get heat stroke. The least Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> oh, no. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. I'm already looking forward to it. Aren't you, Zach? No. Zach, the searing light. Mmm, <laughs> these scents. It's the deep south mm, that was a fabulous breakfast you're the you, world's greatest chef you didn't even eat it uh wait mister you didn't take a single bite well the tea was to die for but i'd prefer coffee next time what would a morning be without coffee thank you chef for doing the right thing All right, before I do anything, I'm going to pause. What the freak? Ah! Okay, so... Freak, super fast move. Dang, he can run far. Okay. I'm going to take some time now. And we'll come back. I'm gonna come back to this. I don't wanna cut this part out, but you know. So, actually, my thing I gotta say first. But. Yes, I have to go down a flight of stairs. He can run so fast for no reason. And no tank controls. I know the opening was kind of. Oh, I didn't have a choice. I had to go one direction. Son Rouge. They've been chasing it all over America. I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zack? No. I think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase. Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but it's seen too much. This hole's from the shootout in Tucson. And this stains from Miami. Ah, Miami. Now, that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two. Wait, what? Even with the help of the drugs, a feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. Same floor his blood gushed out onto. 
<laughs> I know, Zach, I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. I feel like when he talks to Zach with his... When he does the fingertips of the... Like, no, uh, head, it must be no, you're solid. An emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. And Lise Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. What? The 16-year-old girl who was murdered. How'd you get the picture of her? Her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou, along with a strange altar. The powerful man who essentially controls the town of Lucare. And he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zack. Good answer. That's... what? Okay. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zack. Really? The Island. 2005, directed by Michael Bay. For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. An experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama. It was art house sci-fi. That director's going to change the history of art house films. Are you following me here? No. This is another special film that's setting a new standard, just like Star Wars and Blade Runner did. I'll be honest with you, I don't even remember the island being released. This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line. A genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of that. Don't you, Zach? That didn't happen, right? I know it's 05. 17 years later, like it is now. That didn't happen. I just want to save. Yes, I can see my quest is updated. Uh, there's a save point. All right, guys, I've been at this for a while. So next time on Deadly Premonition Two. We'll have some fun with it. I'll see you then.